Um, so, hello, everybody. Uh, if you don't, don't know me, I'm Miss Maggie Dimitri. Um, I taught on junior campus for about 13 years, and I'm on senior for it's not my fourth year now, and I'm loving it. Um, and I'm teaching science for those who don't know me. Um, and uh, the goal today was to show like things that I do that have worked with sustaining a relationship with the kids and doing um, activities online to try and be as interactive as possible. Um, so I can share um, my screen. And used. It's already shared. There it is. It was already shared. No, no, go it's back. It's already shared. Yeah. Okay. Do you still see it, Rachel? Is it still shared? It's all good. It's all good. So um, I can share with you tricks for the start of the class. Um, for example, I use I use the chat box a lot. So I ask this question, for example, where would you rather be right now if you had a choice and COVID wasn't around? And I tell you, OK, guys, as of tomorrow, pack your bags. We are going. And I'd like you to try and answer that in the chat. Go ahead. If you had a choice, where would you be? So I'm going to start. Then you can start and then watch them start typing as well. Let's see. Ah, oh, okay. you want us to write? You yeah, want us to write so we're down? Gonna oh, okay. We're all students right now. Let's go. <laughs> and these little things that take a couple of minutes in the beginning of class. Um, really does on the long run sustain a relationship is in you see them in class in person you're like oh you know yes I, I would i share the same dream as you i'd love to be on the water one day as well so these little things here and there uh help sustain the relationship these little things and it takes 30 seconds one minute just every time ask them some kind of personal random question like hey do you have a pet right now if you have a pet right now in your uh, chat box and your sibling doesn't count okay it has to be a, an actual pet there you go <laughs> okay so that's one thing that i do to sustain um a relationship with them um so the chat box i use a lot it's a big tool for me um you can ask them how are they feeling these are the types of questions uh or they'll say i'm sleepy or i'm hungry or i'm tired i'm fed up um ask them what they had for lunch or breakfast um show them a strange eye-catching picture and ask for their opinion uh, whatever i think it applies to any subject um and you can um make it you know integrated in your lesson as well as a beginning like an eye-catching picture uh using emojis on google meet um you can use emojis wait a second let me go back to the meeting I haven't used teams in a while so if you uh, right click, see it doesn't work on Teams, but on Google Meet, uh, when you right click, uh, you're able to um, uh, add emojis. So let me see, can you, do you guys know how to add emojis? Can you press the raise hand button, add emojis on Google Meet? Let's see, raise your hand if you know how to add emojis on Google Meet. I'll pick you. Are you unable? Oh, Anne Marie. Okay. Is it because you can't? There is no. Oh, okay. So I think it'll be useful to add to open a Google Meet session. This will be helpful throughout the presentation. So let me open a Google Meet. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. And share that in case you have questions. Am I even able to share? Huh. Can you see this, Sherry, or anyone? It's just loading now. We can okay. see now your face. Like a, your face is in a little circle. Okay. I added thumbs up. Oh, you did? Okay. So for those who don't know, once you're in the chat of the Google Meet, right click and you can add emojis right here. So then you have 
uh, a slew of examples to choose from. Okay, in case you didn't know. Okay, uh, the next one is. Uh, Wait, can you just re-say that again quickly? I missed that. Yes, Sabita. Can you just restate how you got the emojis again? Sure. Do you see the Google Meet screen? Yeah. OK. Uh, when you're in the chat, you see where I'm pointing at in the chat? Uh, you right click with your mouse, right click, and it says emoji right here. Emoji. And then you have so many to choose from, all kinds. Halloween. Oh, thank you. Craziness. Next, oh, I'm just gonna leave the, sh the screen like this, it'll be easier, okay. Um, all of this can be done in the beginning. It takes a few minutes, but it, it is worthwhile. Um, you can even share an interesting fact just to get their attention um, and name a place you'd rather be. We've already done that. So question for you guys, do you have any idea what this is? Uh, please write your answer in the chat. Let's see your answer in the chat. Go ahead and write it down. Let's see. Anybody know what this is? Ah, let's see your answers in the chat. This is one of the places I visited a few years ago. I won't say what it is yet, but it's really an eye catching architecture. A big mirror. Yeah, it is a giant 3D meter mirror. Nope, not Egypt. Ah, Miss Pang, you got it. Yes, it's in Chicago. Yes, excellent. So um, in this case, you see, that's what I was going to say. Good job. Um, so, uh, you know, eye-catching images like these that can lead a discussion into your lesson or not. It doesn't have to always be directly into your lesson. It's just something to get them awake and uh, make sure they're even there. <laughs> and so this one, you know, it's nice in Chicago, they have what they call the bean and uh, it shows you the the outlook to the world. Um, it's really incredible when you're standing right next to it. It's like you're looking at the entire sky. It's incredible. Um, I know I don't know about you guys, but I have some classes that are very quiet and I keep asking and there's absolute silence. You can hear crickets sometimes. So instead, uh, when the less dynamic classes I asked them to raise hand instead. So we use the raise hand button way more with the quiet class. So raise your hand if you think this is in Chicago or raise your hand if you think this is in Egypt kind of thing. So you kind of change it away, change it around, or you can even ask uh, specific students, uh, uh, Sherry, where do you think this is located? You can write your answer on the chat or unmute yourself. Something I've discovered recently, a mentee. So a mentee, you can use a mentee. Uh, Google Classroom, as we have it right now, uh, we don't have, the school board didn't pay for the extra uh, activity button, which would allow you to do polling um, and uh, breakout rooms. So we had to figure other ways to make it manual. So there's something I discovered recently called the mentee meter. Um, and you can use a mentee to ask quick questions. So I'll show you an example. Right here. This is when you go. There you go. And uh, um, what it is, here we go. So the student can uh, type in, you see what you, the website up here, www.mentee.com, and use the code. So I'll give you guys a second to give it a try. You can do it on your device. And I'm waiting for you. So you could they type in menti.com and use the code 740716. Ah, we have somebody, some people coming in. Ah. Wonderful. Press enter to start the countdown. OK, is everybody in? Menti.com and use the code 740716. 
answer fast to get more points. Where is the bean located? Well, I already answered that, but still, just so you can see what it looks like. Go ahead. You have 10, 9. Oh, yay, you're all correct. Great, great. <laughs> Amazing. So it's a quick, uh, well, you know, I shouldn't have revealed the answer before. That's a mistake on my part. But if, if people would have answered different answers, you would see it going up and down over here in the screen. Why does it say we're all wrong? Yeah, None of the I, options are correct. I don't know why. <laughs> I must have been in something I did in the settings. I probably did not put the answer. You're right. <laughs> Where I do have another one. Hold on. Uh, wait a second. Don't move. Menti meter. Do you see the screen, Sherry? Yes. Yeah, we do. I probably shared the wrong one. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Let's try this one. I hope this one's the right one. Menti.com. And the new code is 4875602. I don't understand your question, Mr. Ray. Stephanie, does it let you know what students sign in to Menti? You mean they're not? Oh. Yeah, I'm just wondering because I know with Jamboard sometimes it's hard to see what students are actually participating. Does it tell you what students, um, like do they put their name so you know who's actually in the mentee poll? Uh, let's see. I, I think there's a feature for that. I can't say for sure. It's very okay. new to me as well. Um, my guess is no, but um, if we play, our, there's so many features and I'm just... Mm -hmm showing you the bare minimum yeah it's pretty cool yeah i just want it different from kahoot because kahoot is fun but there is a lot out there as well all right mm -hmm. let's start the beginning the countdown i think there is a way to add it to students add specific students yes just haven't played enough with it who won the super bowl 2021 let's see uh-huh <laughs> five seconds Ah, yes, good job. So you see, there is another way to actually do it live. I just made it as a competitive, but there's a way to make it non-competitive. So you can see it as it goes along. So it's, it's just a different way to do it. Let's see if I click six. No, it doesn't do it. So that's one cute little tool I've discovered recently. You have a question? Fun. Yeah, it, if you play around with it, there's so much more to Menti. Another thing that I've tried is to take advantage that they're home. Uh, you can make use of what they have at home when applicable. For example, I've done before when we talked about nutrition, I need you to go find a food label um, and come back and show it to us. Find something that has a high content protein, for example, or find something that has high content of sugar. So they all go scrambling in their closets, looking in their pantries or closet or their drawers and find some bags of whatever chips or other interesting things. They're, the sky's the limit of which you can ask them. So it's a, it can be a scavenger hunt uh, of something. And even in French, you can have them, uh, allez me trouver um, quelque chose, uh, je sais pas moi, qui est fait en bois. Uh, and just thinking out loud here, uh, whatever, you know, whatever works for you. Okay. Um, or find a newspaper or a book or a magazine, go look for a magazine, um, labels on food items, that sort of thing. Around Christmas time, I was saying, go find me, um, an ornament or go find something round and red. So they go looking for round and red things. Um, when we just talked about the senses, I said, okay, I need you to go find us something that makes noise, but don't, uh, don't tell us what it is. Make the noise away from the screen. We have to guess what that noise is. So they would go find some things and then come back, make the noise. We have to figure out what it is that they're making. What is that sound? So see if it fits in your, in your lesson, something that you know, take advantage that they are home. 
they can actually do stuff in their house that they can't do at school. So I've tried that a couple of times. Could use in math. Oh, for what? Yeah. Oh, um, Rachel, are you talking about the formative assessment for the uh, mentee? Yes, sorry. I'm listening also to a seven year old tell me about his pandas on Hi. on uh, Hi. Minecraft. He has a COVID two week lockdown. Anyway, yes, yeah, so, <laughs> starting yesterday or today. Um, yes, yeah, so I was thinking for math, you could throw in there a question. And yep. the kids could all answer the question, um, and then you would know everyone does not understand what slope is, for example. Ah, yeah, and it doesn't. Quick. And it doesn't matter who answered the question or not. It really doesn't matter if you have seventeen kids yep. and more than half of them answered the wrong question. You know, you have to reteach it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, I love that. You can even do yes/no questions. Um, you can do it competitive or not. If they're not, then you see the polls moving up and down. You can see as the kids entering. It's really cool. Um, building up the excitement. So make them looking forward to come to your class by doing events that you announce ahead of time. So whether it's online or in person, for example, if it's online, I'm saying you can you can actually again a use of being at home. Bring your own breakfast if you're OK with that or bring your hot chocolate day on Friday. We're doing bring your hot chocolate um, or a Jeopardy which I can show you in a few minutes. Uh, on Friday, we'll be doing a Jeopardy on yada, yada, yada. Um, share a recipe. I've tried that with my homeroom online class once. Uh, in advance, I shared them a recipe, uh, like a one single mug, mug cake, and then they brought it to class. Not everybody did it, of course, uh, but it's just, again, building up the excitement of being present with their cameras on. It's just a different way of turning on the cameras instead of always saying turn on your cameras, turn on your cameras. Um, if you're watching a movie during your class, you can allow them, of course, entirely up to you. It's bring your snack day, bring your popcorn to class. Um, or you can even celebrate a birthday. So uh, I will, I can get back to the uh, Jeopardy game in a few minutes, but this link, I'll leave it in there just because of lack of time. But there is a way to do it online. The kids, kids are all at home playing Jeopardy. Um, and they, it's a great way to do a review. Uh, during class, what I've done many times, don't forget they're sitting all day long on their computers or in class. And they do need a brain break, especially online. They need an eye break as well. They need to get up, stretch, and change their eye position, uh, look around. And so what I've done before is use a Google timer. So it's as simple as you go on uh, Google, Google timer, and you set the timer and it will start. And it's like, uh, and then it will ring at the end. Yeah, let's just reset it to, uh, uh, hold on. Let's say uh, five seconds, uh, five seconds. And it's gonna ring. I'm not sure you heard it, but I heard it on my end. I would have to share with the sound. Um, and so they know that when they hear it, it's like a bell ring. I need to come back to class now. And this allows them to get up and move a little bit as well. Uh, there we go. Any questions so far? I know I'm going pretty fast. Half an hour is not enough. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, so here, let's try this with you guys. Um, so far, everything that, that I've, I've talked about, can you give me a five in the chat if you understand? A three so-so, one not at all. Go ahead. I want to see the numbers raining down in the chat. Five, if you understand. Three so-so, one not at all. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's raining fives. Hallelujah, it's raining fives. <laughs> Sometimes I sing that. So uh, again, when they start typing in the fives, the threes, or the ones, um, they do, they will write, the, you know, the three, the four, or whatever. Some kids write 4.5 of that. <laughs> so this just means they understand it. They just need to let it sink in a bit. So when you're explaining something, it could take a minute, 
you know, in between your topic and say, okay, at this point, how much do you understand this? Okay. So this, again, a quick informal way um, to take a quick poll, uh, kind of gauge, okay, with this topic, do I need to review it? And then right away you can see, there's always going to be those three or four kids that'll say a three or a four. And so you can re-explain it to make sure you, they understand. This is so effective, guys. Trust me, even in class, I have them hand up everybody put a five, a three, or a one. And then you have the odd kids that put six. Okay, it's like, fine, I know you understand it. That's great. And then you can quiz them, of course. So there's the famous Jamboard that everybody knows about. Um, I do have a YouTube video about it. I, I had a feeling we wouldn't have time to get through all of it. Um, but if you want, I can take a minute to look at it as well. So we have, I'll just get through to the end and then we can rewind. So there's the jam boards where you can actually put information, uh, worksheets on the background, in the background and, um, and have them write simultaneously, all of us collaboratively together. Um, so that's the jam board. I, I can get back to it. Then there's your famous Kahoot. You have the quizzes. Uh, which is a different form of Kahoot. Um, Sherry, have you heard about this one before? Quizzes? No, I haven't. Ah, okay. Um, so I actually, let's do that one instead of the Jamboard, and I can get back to it if you like. Maggie, I do have a quick question about the Jamboard, yeah. especially as a science teacher. Um, no, I was just wondering because I, I mean, I've seen it in action, but I, I must admit I'm kind of lacking in an idea for using Jamboard for science oh, class. Okay. Can so you give me an example of how, how you would use it for science? Let's do it. Yeah, I'll do it right now. Thanks, Mike. So I am uh, in the Google Meet right now, let's say. Do you see that, Sherry? I am sharing still, right? Yes, I see it. Okay. Sorry, I have to keep on muting myself, so it takes a second to respond. No problem. <laughs> So you click on the, the bottom right buttons there, you open a whiteboard. So I'm probably, for now, you're good with that. Yeah. And then once you're here, um, you can set background and your image. So let's say you have an advanced um, a worksheet. I'll Google Drive. I need one that's empty. Hold on. <laughs> There's so many. So many things. Ah! Well, no. No, that's not it. Sorry. Wait. I will find something. Hold on. Uh, let's do an image search instead. <laughs> um, diagram of the cell. Let's say you pick this image. OK, set as frame background. So pick an image or pick a pre-made worksheet. OK, set as background. OK, so now the part, look at this, Sherry, and everybody else. On the top here, when it says expand frame bar, click here. You're going to get three little dots. See that? On the three dots, press duplicate. That's your magic word. Duplicate, duplicate, keep on duplicating. So now all the kids get the same image with the same background. Okay. So if you go back here, you can say, for example, um, student uh, number one, you get number one frame. And then they can't do anything to this. It's a background. So you, let's say you want them to fill in the blanks here. So you can have them um, instead of, you know, cytoplasm they can write it down cytoplasm and i can see this being useful in math because you can watch them you know do the work in here and you can enlarge the size you can put it can i say something how you can do it for math oh there you go gonna... oh yes go ahead i was just going to say how mr pabros taught me um, and we've been using an adapted math with mr mckenzie so you have the background is let's say a cartesian plane and you have multiple choice and you have answers of what the slope is, for example. And um, the kids can each create a sticky note 
and they put their sticky note next to the correct answer. So you see this cluster, hopefully, of sticky notes next to the correct a, B, C, or D. Oh, I see. And then That's you see. Idea. Yeah, it's great. And it starts a discussion and then you all, and they all chime in and start like proving why they were right and going, oh, and then they, it's really great. And they start seeing great. why their answer was right or wrong. Yeah. And you know, also, yeah, I like that it's cool. embedded right away in the, in the chat, in the Google Meet. So the kids don't have to like fiddle around looking for the site or whatever. They just click, click and go. Um, and do you know who, like, how do you say, like, okay, uh, you know, Rachel, your student one, Maggie, your student two, do you say that, or how does yeah. that work? You can say it in advance. Uh, okay, Rachel, I'd like you to work on the first slide. So and so, right, I go in the second slide. The other option I've done before, Sherry, is have them write their name. Right? So pick a slide, That's pick true. an empty slide, and have them write their name either with a sticky note or directly, like, um, where did it go now? Hold on. If that's so obvious and I didn't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. No yeah. problem. Oh, no. oh, it's here. So yeah, let's say uh, you can either pre-assign them or they can go ahead and write their name uh, over here. Like, you know, this is uh, Maggie. Okay. Next. Oh, this is a blank one. I'm going to use that one. No one use it. That's mine. Uh, you know, I got dibs on that one. So this is Sherry or whatever. <laughs> Okay. Can I say something yeah, else, Maggie? Yes. Um, maybe you're going to say this, but I just was going to say that um, this Jamboard gets saved in your drive, and then all ah. the kids who it belongs to can always have it there. Mm -hmm. And I also just wanted to say that a lot of my kids in Adapted Math, um, they have issues getting onto Jamboard, and it's always because they're logged on somewhere in the background with the wrong email address. So they have to sort of like restart the whole computer sign back into Google Classroom with the correct. So that's always the major issue of not being able to go into Jamboard. And I've often just had to share my screen regardless because uh, I can't get in. But that's just troubleshooting. Yes, issues, issues. Always there's going to be issues. <laughs> it's part of the game. Yeah. Thanks, Maggie. I kind of assumed it was more like a brainstorming thing. That's why I was wondering how you would use it for science. Because I was thinking, yeah. like, see it in English or something, throw your ideas on the board. But in science, I was like, eh. My God, that's awesome. Great. Uh, you, I made them draw the path, let's say, of the digestive system. Okay. Uh, follow. Here's a picture. Show me where, you know, where does the fat, the food go, for example, or name, uh, name the glands. Uh, they can type up uh, lab information. Right. Uh, my God, the 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 sky's the limit, and I like that I can see them do it, and you can even write inside. Oh, hey, this is great. Put a check mark or whatever. And that's the really nice interactive part of it. It's really cool. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, use Thanks, it, Sherry. You will love it. Yeah. Right now, my classes are still in person. So oh, we're, it's we're true. doing. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Um, Maggie? <laughs> yes. Um, how do they access Jamboard? Do you have to give them a link or just. Yeah, is that Sabita? Yeah. 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 So see, I'll go back to my meeting. Oh, what's this? Sorry. I see I just finished the video on, on Jamboard. Uh, yeah, if you go back to the meeting, where did it go? I have a million things open. There it is. It's already, when you when you go in and do the, the Jamboard right here, see where it says white Jamboard, whiteboard, open a jam. Um, it's already embedded in their chat. So you just tell them it's directly in the chat. And then you can definitely oh. copy paste it in the classroom if you want, in the stream or whichever. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Could they use it on on their phone? I think so. Yeah. Anything Google is doable on on the phone. If a kid is late to class, they will not see the link. Just repost it. Yeah. Copy paste it, repost it. Or if you put it on the classroom stream, they'll see it. There always. Yeah. Yeah, um, they, it's true. Even if they're at, at a, in class, it's a different way to use, um, like, you know, like think of it as a, a digital worksheet. Instead of passing out papers, they can use a device to do the work on the device for change. 
And I, I, for example, those who have to do like um, Nora, the steps of uh, solving a problem, you can put a problem and have them solve it underneath and watch them do it as they, as they solve it and tell them, oh, careful, you're missing units here or you didn't divide properly, things like that. Yeah, could they do it on their phone? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, same like Flipgrid, by the way, it is doable on the phone. Okay. So, uh, so far, can I get a five if that's all good? A three, so-so? One, not at all? <laughs> You're my students today. Uh, five plus, yay! Wonderful. You're such great students. Oh. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. However, I don't see Mr. Strauss responding. Mr. Strauss. Hmm, where is he? Did he leave the meeting? He's still there. Let's see the participants. Uh, oh, it's just, oh yeah, I don't see him though. Oh, he is, but he hasn't responded. Okay, actually, uh, Miss Cameron, could you be the eyes on the chat in case? You could be my chat moderator. Um, and I do that with students as well, FYI. Uh, if you know there's a student that is really reliable, you can tell them, I need you to be my eyes on the chat. Okay, and this way, again, there's sometimes, even though I can have a second screen on, I still miss things, <laughs> okay, because I'm work, working on the presentation. Okay, quizzes, quizzes. Really, really fun, guys. You will love it. Uh, let me share. So, as opposed to Kahoot, a quizzes um, gives the, the students the choice to go at their own pace, as opposed to waiting for everyone to finish response. And this, by the way, is doable totally in class. Um, and you only need, get this, one device. You do not need a second device. Why I'm saying this, Sherry? Because where we run into the problem at home when we have the online class, is that the kid have only one device. They don't have another phone or their parent using their phone, but you know, so they end up sometimes they can't do the Kahoot. They have to sit and do the, just answer the questions like that on their own. So what they do, what with the quizzes is that, you know, you just need that one device to join. Okay. Which I'm going to share in just a second. And what's fun is that you, you do it. And um, if the kid is done their, the answer, the question, they move on to the next right away. They don't wait. And so it's a, it's a competition of who gets to finish the quickest uh, questions. And uh, they get all kinds of uh, choices. For example, do you want to freeze time? Do you want to um, remove two of the wrong answers? So they have two to choose from. You know, there's like a, a bunch of possibilities. And the analysis part is just even more mind-blowing. So I'll show you... Uh, uh, my library here, for example, a quick um, six capitals start a life quiz. And you'll you'll understand what I mean. Continue. So from your device now, or if you do have a second device, you can go ahead. You don't have to. You can go on this website, joinmyquiz.com, enter the join code. And then the rest is very easy. You just follow it. So I'll give you a minute to go ahead and try. Ah, who do we have here now? Sabita, welcome. So again, if you want, I can copy paste this link in the chat if that helps. Up, oh, Sherry, Katie, hello. Ray Ray, we have more people joining. We have four people so far. Anyone else? Ah, oh, Nora. Hey, Nora. So this is a twist on Kahoot. Actually, the analysis part yeah. is outstanding. Yeah, yeah. You ready? Start. Questions will be on your device. Not on the screen. Music is nice, different. Uh, 
Nora, Nora, you're getting in. Sherry, second place. Vicky, number three. Need to eat that cookie bake all the time. That was an accident, but uh, at least I got it right. <laughs> Sherry, <laughs> good job, Sherry. Is. Sherry, number one. Amazing. The beat got it on the roll. Katie's on fire. Number one. Came back. Katie is on a roll. Look at her. Amazing. Uh, let's keep it up. Keep it up. We're winding down. Katie, number one. Amazing. Vita, number two. Ray Ray. Sherry, I, I hope you know that was all my, those process. were all guesses. Sherry. <laughs> this quiz was hard. I think you need to go back to a geography class, Sherry. <laughs> okay, what's that? I'm what trying to play with, class. I'm trying to play with different things and see what happens. Ah. Like, so you know. hard. I had to guess. So, Sherry, um, now I'm on a white page. I don't know. I'm trying there. here. Maggie, yeah. so I got them all right, but I'm lower. That means because I was slow, right? That you did a speed thing. Can I repeat again? So I got them all right, but I'm like not first. So that's because I did it slow, right? Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you can change that feature, right? Yes, I think you can play around. There's so much. Again, it's a very new to me as well. I played a little bit, but I haven't played enough to know all the ins and outs 100%. Um, you can make it non-competitive, I believe. I know it may stress some kids. Um, the nice thing about this is that you can assign it as practice. I don't know if you can still see my screen. And um, you share it on the classroom, and they can do it again at their own time, whenever. They have access to it any other time. They can email. You can email the parents. Look at this. You can see it. Katie here, the responses uh, that she got, uh, all of you guys, all in once. The show the time it took. Uh, where is that? Uh, the questions, look at the questions. Hello? It's stuck. I got a little confused because I got this power up thing and then yeah. I don't know what exactly, I wasn't too sure what was going on. So I was pressing some random stuff there and I, I don't know what the kids Yeah, going on. it was a very quick quiz, but the kids actually play around with all of it as well. Now look at the assessment part. Class accuracy, the class answered 0% of questions correctly. What? <laughs> what does that mean? A share of practice link. Um, so this is the one when you share it, uh, just share this link and it can practice at any time. Usually there's a link here, I don't know, Oh, there, it says link copy to clipboard. Usually it shows here, but I don't know why it's not showing. It actually shared the clipboard, uh, copied the clipboard and allows me to um, embed it in classroom. Hello. Suck. Come on. Oh, come on, don't do this to me. I used it on the phone and at the bottom of that, it has like um, study flashcards. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we said Nora third, Sabita second, Katie first. Good job. But wait, the other part is what I wanted to show you. There, class accuracy. Nora 100% mastered. So you all got 100%. Uh, what I wanted to show you is this. Oh yeah, now it's better. I think it needed to be uh, reloaded. The class answered 100% of the questions correctly. Toughest question. Which is the capital of, which is the capital? Here it is of Italy. That was the toughest question, really? <laughs> <laughs> OK, and uh, Rome. Um, and then you can toggle between all the questions like that. Um, longest question, the one that took the longest time, which is the capital of Sweden. Um, average time is three seconds. <laughs> um, interesting facts, the average time taken by per question is three seconds. Um, oh, there it is. All the questions are here and even the accuracy. So yeah, I worked with the students. It's interesting that all the groups had the same questions, um, 
like took longest on the same question. So I took the time to review that one question that everyone had difficulty with. So it's a really amazing quick analysis. That's my favorite part. Um, of, for, of course, the actual game is fun, but the analysis is even more fun on a teacher standpoint. And then assign as practice. Uh, you can you see give it as a homework. Or no dot line like the sky is the limit with this guys. It's really a new feature. Any questions? I know there's a lot of information. I told you a half an hour is not enough with me. Um, if you need to leave by any meaning, go ahead. Let me see. I'm not done yet, but if you want to stay a bit longer, I still have more things to show you. <laughs> this is free, right, Maggie? All yeah, this? totally free. And you can duplicate other people's quizzes. I've done that before, and I just modify it a bit like Kahoot. Uh, with Kahoot, you can copy and modify. This one you can also copy and modify. It's really fun. Um, what else? Maggie, if yes. I could just jump in here. I, I'm sorry, I just, I mean, you might be talking about this later, but I've recently discovered Quizlet. Oh, um, uh, yes. I've, I heard of it before, but mm -hmm. I've just really started using it this year, and my grade sevens are like addicted. Like on the day of a quiz, I'll walk into my classroom. And they're like, no, no, it's water. It's a water cycle. It's precipitation. They're like screaming at each other to answer the quiz lead. Yes. And their marks yes. are just skyrocketing. They just love, love it. it. Quizlet.com. Yeah. So many resources. Insane. This one's the, like, uh, how do you call them? Flashcards? They're flashcards, but then it will take what you write as the flashcards and then it'll do uh, some more games. Like, it'll, they'll be matching games, they'll create a test. So the kids can test themselves on it. Uh, they can go live so they can actually race against each other to match things. And so they're like, it, it's crazy. You walk into a class and you're wondering why they're so excited. But it, it's literally just because they're playing and reviewing but, or a quiz. <laughs> but I love it. Yeah. Quizlet. And you can also um, you find Quizlets online. And I was finding some for Pascal's class to practice before a test. And there's a ton with questions that are maybe beyond their level. So you just go delete those ones. And so then you can have, and it'll resave as like your own question. Oh, set cool. of questions. Yeah. Thanks, Rachel. I didn't know that. Yeah, it is great, Quizlet. I haven't used it enough. Nora, did you use it in your classes? Nora. Oh, I haven't used Quizlet. Okay. I've just been using Kahoot. Yeah. I've been using Plickers. Oh yeah, flickers. Um, so much stuff out there. Well, not flickers, plickers. Oh, flickers. P. Yeah. There is because I had those set up last year, so that's why I've been just, and it's hard. It's harder with uh, with half of them because I teach fifty percent is yes. online and fifty percent is in class, so it's kind of super difficult to kind of just do one thing. Um, with half of them being there and the other half um, being online. Right. But with the quizzes, you you can do them. They can all be together, even the ones yeah. online and the ones in class. Yeah, that's why I use Kahoot's. But Plickers, I was able to use it with the half the kids in class showing and then the other half just typing in the response. Ah. So it worked OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I encourage you to explore quizzes. Yeah. Uh, you will love it, trust me, especially the analysis part. I love that. Yeah, Okay. I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of this one, Edpuzzle. Again, it's a new feature for me as well. I, I just thought I would share. Uh, I would like to use it in my classes. Edpuzzle. Any of you ever heard of it? So Edpuzzle, another way to make sure they're actually in class and attentive, whether it's online or it can be as an assignment, they watch a video, a YouTube video, for example, that you assign, but you get to uh, pause and enter questions within the video. You heard of that before? So I'll share it. I'll show you. I've heard of it, but I, I never used it. Uh, I'll show you. Uh, there are some that pre-made. For example, this one. So these people, all these people made videos and you see there, this one has like 18 questions, for example. And you see where the drops are? 
this is where the questions are. So if I just advance to the questions, uh, let's say here. So they're watching a video and then it stops. Oh, there. Open ended question. In one complete sentence, predict how the multiple transcranial magnetic stimulator will affect movement. Be specific. See that? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold up, hold up. Um, quick, sorry, Maggie. I, I keep interrupting you. I'm so sorry. No problem. Yes, tell me. Um, put a movie and like put questions and we'll know what answers like as an assignment yeah as like, an assignment so i'm just like brainstorming here as for literary devices i show them like a movie and yeah. then in the middle of the movie i'm like what is this an example of what literary device and they have to click it in yeah yes that's and then so cool it is really cool um and especially the adopted kids they need to like well anybody not just the adopted kids who are, are on at home and you want to make sure they're attentive. Nora, even for yourself uh, in class, you can show share the video, whether they're at home or in class and have them all answer questions. Um, the ones that are at school, they can have them write the answer on paper and the ones at home, they can, um, I guess, type up directly and then it's submitted into uh, into your class. It's called Ed Puzzle. Ed puzzle.com so yeah art appreciation yes thanks so the sky uh, is the limit with this yeah you there's a lot of stuff <laughs> pre-used pre videos or you can make your own i believe it is um hold on it's down here see all this assign edit duplicate uh, again it's the sky is the limit all these people made videos with the same guy, the same video, YouTube video, and all these people have questions. You know how many? You see how many questions there? They're there. Um, I believe it's here. If you want to add content, this is where you add. You see, create a video, upload a video, student project. I mean, it's the sky is the limit with this. Yes, it is very cool, and I can't wait to use it as well in my class. Just they're working on a project now, um, but I intend to use this very soon. Yeah. So that I, it's also in my PowerPoint. I can share it with you guys. It's all free. There is a grade book. Uh, my class, you can add your class. It's incredible. And you can look at what other people did the density of a solid. I can see this being as a virtual lab, Nora. You can have them watch a lab and then um, answer questions for example okay uh, after you've watched this section like it forces them they have to pause like not even it pauses for them and then they have to watch to get the answer there's no choice so if they were not attentive they will be forced to be attentive okay the materials of the slab are blah 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 next continue watching um what is your hypothesis after watching this part what is your hypothesis? So I can see this being as a virtual lab as well. I know this is an issue we're running into with the online classes. Yeah, I've done uh, some virtual labs, oh, but okay. using, uh, using Google Forms though. Fun. Yeah, so I've been doing like not using that, but just using Google Forms. Yeah. And posting up the video and then they have to answer the question and submit it and so forth or the latest one I did was just uh, an assignment. They have to watch the video and have to write up the mm -hmm. procedure and so forth. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, the sky is the limit. This one, the question is embedded in the video um, as they watch it. So it's one step at a time uh, as opposed to at the end. So I know some kids might get a bit lost with, OK, I need to go back. I'm not sure where in the video. It depends on your kids. You know your kids. I know some of mine would, I think, would like to have it a little more guided. So this gives you the opportunity to make it guided. Can I ask a question? Probably. Yes, Rachel. Um, I just looked at our our workshops from Kolchak and it says at 1030 we're supposed to join this other one. 
I'd much rather stay here, but I'm worried. Yeah, it was I optional. I don't know if you already did you sign oh. up for it? Yeah, but does that matter? I can just stay here. Yeah, me too. I signed up. Look, okay, let me see how much is left on this. <laughs> I knew this would happen. There's so much to share. Um, OK, I'll skip Google assignment. The breakout rooms. Look, I have a video that I've made. If you want to know how to make it breakout rooms, because I had a feeling this would happen and we run out of time. I made a video explaining how to do it. So I'll let you watch it at your own pace. Same as Flipgrid, how to do it. Um, um, and examples, like current examples that I'm using in science. Okay, The one before, even the breakout room, I was recording um, literally as the kids were in breakout rooms. I said, okay, well, since I'm waiting, hmm, let me do this. So I went ahead and did that video, and they all know. Um, same with Flipgrid, it's current. They're actually having an assignment on Flipgrid. So I can share those videos with you. And this way, uh, at your own pace, you can watch and um, go back to it, pause it, whichever thing, whatever you like. Yeah. So I hope this was helpful. It was amazing, Maggie. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah.